Hey, what's going on y'all? This is Stevie with another episode of Project Twine and today we're going to be going over the Etsy directory within the Linux file system hierarchy. So as you can see, I'm logged into a plain vanilla CentOS server hosted on AWS and I'm just going to list out what's at the root. So in other episodes, we're going to be going over specifically what each of these directories really do. and Today, we're mainly focusing on this Etsy directory. So I'm just going to list everything out. So a good way of thinking about the Etsy directory is um, it being kind of like the central nerve system for your Linux machine. So generally, you don't have executable binaries here. You rather have static configuration text files. So basically, that just means you don't really execute applications from this directory, or nor do you have um, files that allow you to do so here. So a good way to kind of think about Etsy is it's standing for editable text configuration. It really stands for etc. But over time, it's grown as a kind of standard and best practice to holding all your configuration files. All right, so let's go over some of the main components and run through a couple examples of how the Etsy directory works. Um, so let's open up this file called passwd. And this file represents the users that are uh, able to run on your Linux machine. So I was actually logged in as this user called CentOS when I first uh, logged into my server. And you can see that there's a, a user called root. But the general takeaway that you should be seeing from this is that this is just a text file and these rather plain text files really store the configurations for applications that are native to the Linux machine. So this came with the machine and also applications that you will continue to install in the future. Generally, um, each of these uh, third party applications, so to speak, have perhaps their own directory within Etsy. Um, so let's take a look at something like Chrome. Um, so I'm just at the documentation page for Chromium. You can see that they, when you download Chrome, they store a lot of the policies and the configurations of the policies under Etsy, under Etsy Chromium or Etsy opt slash Chrome. So the opt directory generally is used for third party applications, as you can see in this example. And m a lot of applications just store the configuration files that are native um, within this just Etsy directory. So for one more example, we can talk about uh, MongoDB. So as many of you guys might know, this is just a kind of database that you can uh, database application that you can install and start to run on your machine. And I'm looking through the documentation for configurations of MongoDB. And as you can see, they also store their configuration files within the Etsy directory. Um, and they have this file called mongod.conf or mongos.conf. But really what I'm trying to drive home here is that when you write applications for Unix kind of style machines or operating systems, Generally, these software engineers are following um, a standard. Um, specifically, there's a file system hierarchy standard out there that they try to follow just so that applications are easier to handle and for you to troubleshoot them and for them to develop and understand where to put certain things. So if in the future you're ever writing an application, you would probably store your configurations for that application inside the Etsy directory. And if you're a server administrator, uh, you would also configure the application itself within the Etsy directory. Anyways, that's it for Etsy. Um, so for our last example, we're going to be going over an application that we already used, and that's VI. And as you can see, within my Etsy directory, we have our VimRC, and I just listed it out. Um, and so this VimRC contains the configurations for basically the text editor that I'm using right now. Um, so this is just to show that, you know, things that come with the machine actually have configurations here as well, as well as... Uh, All right, so that's it for this video, and I hope that was helpful. Meanwhile, you should check out the links in the description box below, 
And until next time, good vibrations.